folk used to say, I wouldn't have a religion that I couldn't feel. Amen? Every once in a while, you ought to be able to feel something. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I Home to live with. 
Amen. I rose this morning for our scripture reading. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms, the 27th number of Psalms. 27th number of Psalms. Starting with verse number one. When you get there, let it be known by saying amen. Amen. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, my, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. I have read to you the 27th number of Psalms. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word.
All right, amen. Y'all get even me in a hand clap of prayer, amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Friday's a good day, 
But there was a my day. Your day may have been may have been on Saturday. Saturday's a good day. But it wasn't my day. Your day may have been may have been on Sunday. Sunday's a good day. But it wasn't my day. One Thursday night. Something got all over me. I started running. But there wasn't nothing wrong. I started crying. Tears in my eyes. I put one foot in front of the next foot. Something got all over me. Oh, the water. Run deep, y'all. Amen. 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 Is that all right? Yeah, that to me and sound good. Oh yeah. All right. Amen. 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 We want to welcome all of our visitors today. God bless you. You understand you could have chose to go anywhere and worship, but the Lord placed it on your heart to come here. And we just want to say you're welcome. If there's anything that you will have to say, you can say it right now. Anybody got something to say? Amen. 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 Listen, any birthdays or anniversaries? What's well, Sister Angela here? She's not here today. Her birthday was Monday, right? All right, amen, amen. Her birthday was Monday. Any other birthday this week? Brother Travis, birthday was Monday. Anybody else? Any other birthdays? Anniversaries? Amen, amen. Just a quick announcement. We will be hosting the mission uh, convention next month. And we will be on program for everything. Amen. So we have to do the welcome program. And we'll do the earth stream also. Amen. 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 Also, we'll do a hospitality room for that. And that will be the fourth weekend in August. Amen. 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 If there's nothing forward, uh, we'll get back to singing. Come on, man. <laughs> Give us another song. I th who got a song? Jayla, come on, Jay. So God is in control. I've got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I watch him while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means. This means war. This means. This means war. This means, this means war. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. Got Satan on my trail. But I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day. But I watch him while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. Come on, fella. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. I plead the blood. 
I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. I've been to the storm and the rain. The blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, my war clothes are on. You can't have my praise No matter the attack I won't turn back This means war This means This means war This means This means war This means This means war You can't have my family This means war. And I told this morning I really wanted to sing, I cleaned up what I messed up. Okay. Maybe next next time I will. But, uh, everybody know this congregation song. Uh, you know, right now it, it's here. It's here. It's here. I feel mighty good because God is good. Uh, and in church, I, I, I often sing this song. I'm satisfied with him because the older I get, the more satisfied I get with him. So y'all help us uh, if you will. Oh, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Oh, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Oh, I'm satisfied.
If he been good to you, you ought to let somebody know. <laughs> Has he been good to you? <laughs> Has he really been good to you? Somebody here sure enough ought to be on your feet clapping hands. <laughs> you, you ought to show enough know, tell somebody, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell, tell, tell your neighbor, I could have been dead. Sleeping in my grave. But all oh, the Lord. All oh, the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but today is a mighty good day. Today, today is a good day. Today is a good day. You, you wondering why we why we clapping and standing on our feet and shouting? This, this God that we serve. Yeah. Satisfied. Sometimes you can't program God, amen. You just got to let God have his way, amen. Amen. We got time. As a matter of fact, you'll feel better if you let it out. Amen. 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 that song all over him. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So thankful for these men. Amen. Thankful for these musicians as well. Amen. Amen. To the uh, deacons and the, the mothers, to these ministers of this church, those that are in the pews and in the pulpit. Uh, to each
each and every one of you to this ushers. Amen. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hey, I know y'all didn't just come for the singing. We really could just go home. Amen. But I better say something. Amen. Because somebody here needs a word. Go with me. To first Peter. Verses will lift up. <clears throat> Are we there? First Peter chapter five. We will commence reading at verse number five. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. Ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Somebody shout due time. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth. For you. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Just want to tell you, thank you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for just being God and God all by yourself. Heavenly Father, it's come down to the time of preaching, and I, like John, I realize that I must decrease while you increase. Heavenly Father, I pray for your anointing, realizing your anointing is not for me, but it's for this, your people. Heavenly Father, and if you don't do it, it won't be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Look at someone in close proximity and say, neighbor, the preacher is preaching about spiritual life insurance. Spiritual life insurance. I will say this. Often times, because we don't know the day or the hour, uh, more times than not, when someone passes, they don't have life insurance. We must prepare uh, to leave just like we prepare to live. Um, there, 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 there is a, another type of life insurance that I want to lift up today. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him, I got some Bible readers in here, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And, and just like Jesus has prepared this place for us, whenever you make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, you got a spiritual life insurance, not only to get you to heaven, but to also help you while you're here. 
because there are going to be some times when we have trials, when we have tribulation. There's going to be some times when we are persecuted. There's going to be some times when people are going to hate on you. There's going to be some times when folks just ain't going to like you. And you ask them, why you don't like me? I just don't like you. There, there's going to be some times when you're mistreated. But understand something. Whenever you got Jesus on your side, you got spiritual life insurance that has been paid for by the blood of the lamb. The history in this text. Let's walk through it. The writer here of this letter identifies himself as Peter, an apostle of Christ. So, some people have questioned uh, whether or not Peter, who was a common fisherman, could append such a letter. Especially since Peter and John were, were, were nothing but, but fishermen. However, this phrase only means laymen without formal schooling. That is, they were not professional religious leaders. We must never underestimate the three years that Peter and the rest of the apostles spent walking and talking with Jesus. The, the recipients of this letter, Peter calls them strangers. Deacon Bailey, which means that they were residents or aliens or sojourners. Uh, they, they are called strangers and pilgrims in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 11. These people were citizens of heaven through faith in Christ. Like Abraham, they had their eyes on faith, uh, uh, eyes centered on heaven, and a future with God. But understand, they're still in this old mean and treacherous world. Just like some of you today, all of us, we're, we got our eyes fixated on heaven, but yet we're having to go through these trials and tribulations down here while we're here. But understand, Jesus says, in this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good, for I have overcome the world. Uh, uh, that, that, that's going to be some time that you're going to have to be trialed. There's going to be some time when you're going to be persecuted. But understand something. Just like these people that Peter is writing to because they're going through some things right now. They're being martyred. They're being talked about. They're being chased. They're being beaten. They're being killed. And all of a sudden, Peter writes this letter to encourage this group of Christians. Felt like the Lord told me today to encourage his people. I know 2020 was rough. I know 2021 has been rough. I know to some of us 2022 has been rough. But can I tell you the good part about it? God brought you through 2020. He going to bring you through. He done brought you through 2021. And now here it is. He's brought you up into the last day of the month in July. Somebody ought to be shouting hallelujah. The important thing for us to understand is these were scattered strangers. They're suffering, being persecuted. But understand something. Peter had a purpose for this letter. He knew that a fire trial was about to begin. The official persecution from the Roman Empire. Two, two, two things brought on this, this trial. You, you remember that boy Paul, don't you? Uh, first of all, Mr. Stafford, Paul had defended the Christian faith before the official court in Rome. He was released, but then arrested again and then Paul was put to death. The other thing that brought on this trial uh, to, uh, on Peter's behalf was the Emperor Nero. You remember that boy, don't you? 
The, the Emperor Nero, he blamed that fire that happened in Rome on Christians using it as a scapegoat. So because of these two things, uh, the, the Christians were the ones who were being put down. It was the Christians were the ones that were being talked about. Do, I, do, I, do that sound familiar today? You, you trying to do right, but it seems as if somebody's pressing your buttons. You trying not to cuss nobody out. Can I be real this morning? You, you trying your best not to cuss your boss out. But yet he keeps on pressing your buttons because you're trying to be uh, the, the person that God wants you to be. And, and come here, somebody. Every time I desire to do good, evil. Ah. Peter writes this letter to let these Christians know you got spiritual life issues. He, he, he let them know that you can make it in trying times. A German philosopher by the name of Soren Kierkegaard says that life is lived forward, but it's understood backwards. Let me put it in your lap and put it in simpler terms. In order for you to know, God is a doctor in a sick room. You got to look back over your life and can testify that God has been a doctor in a sick room. In order for you to know that God can make a way out of no way, you have to be able to look back over your life and see where God made a way out of no way. Somebody here can testify that God is a mother for the motherless. He's a father for the fatherless. But, but you got to look back over your life and you got to be able to testify. Mama's and father is not here with me today, but I got a God up in heaven who sits high and looks low. Somebody here, in order for you to be able to say that God is a bridge over troubled water, you got to look back over your life and be able to see where you have some trouble in your life. And whenever you have some trouble in your life and you got in a situation that you couldn't bring yourself out of, but just like the old church, you turned it over to Jesus and you stopped worrying about it and he worked worked it out. Anybody here ever been through some things? Anybody here ever been through some struggles? Anybody here ever felt pain? But thank God Almighty, the Lord that we serve brought us through it. First thing this text teaches us is sometimes you got to look back before you can look forward. The text says, young people look to the elders. Ah, the, the, the reason, Brother Lad, Peter suggests that the young look towards the elders is because the older people have been through some things. The, the, the older folks, the older Christians have been tried. They've been through the fire. And when they came out, they didn't come out on their own, but they came out because of God. Y'all remember them three Hebrew boys, don't you? Uh, old King Nebuchadnezzar had uh, built this golden statue, and he said, whenever the music plays, I want you to bow down and worship the statue. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down. And because they didn't bow down, uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar throws them into the fiery furnace. But all of a sudden, the king looks down and said, did not we throw three men in the furnace? Then why do I see a fourth man in the fiery furnace and he looks like the son of God? The, uh, the older members here, the older Christians, they know that the only way they made it through some things is because God was on their side. 
And sometimes, us young folks, and I'm going to be included as well, but sometimes when you're growing up in life, you want to try to fix things on your own, not realizing all you got to do is turn it over to God and watch him work things out. Because God said, I'll never forsake you. I'm always with you even until the end of the world. But then watch this. It says to look to the elders, right? But then he says, elders, look back to when you were young. Uh, too, too often there is a generational war in the church between the young and the old. Pastor, what we're doing for the young folks. Pastor, what we're going to do for the older people. Understand something. This thing is not about age. This thing is about ministry. And, and one thing about it, uh, 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 Sister Francis may be the right arm. Brother Latimer may be the left arm. But the, the body of Christ is a body of baptized believers. So even though I may not have one talent that, that, that Deacon Milan has, uh, we got to work together no matter what the age to get God's agenda to move forward. The solution is both young and old must be willing to submit to God's will. We, we, we can never be submissive to one another unless we are first submissive to God. Not only does this text show us that you need to look back before you can look forward, but look, in verse number six, understand sometimes you have to go low before you can go up. The text says, humble yourselves. Watch this. The command, humble yourself, could be translated into allow yourself to be humble. Those who were suffering persecution for Christ's sake could be encouraged by the fact that they came by the mighty hand of God. Understand something. Your suffering, your trials, and your tribulations, sometimes God allows things to happen in our life. I, I know you're feeling like you've been doing everything you could. You pay your tithes. You, be, you come to Sunday school. You're here on morning worship. You come to Wednesday night Bible study. You try to treat everybody right. Well, baby, can I tell you, sometimes life just happens. You remember that boy Joel, don't you? Job wasn't bothering nobody. And here comes Satan wanting to tempt somebody. And God suggests, have you considered my servant Job? Understand, sometimes instead of putting the word Job down, God is asking the question, have you considered my servant, Pastor Bailey? Have you considered my servant, Deacon Bailey? Have you considered my servant, Deacon Miley? Understand, God will not allow you to go through something unless he know you can handle it. And just when you start to get weak, just when you start to throw in the towel, all of a sudden God taps you on the shoulder and he reminds you of Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13, which said, I can do all all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you keep on reading a little bit further, down in verse number 19, it says, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. No matter what you're going through, you're going to make it out. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know it's hard, but you're going to make it. Sometimes, our problems humble us. Our sufferings, they humble us. Some of us have been knocked down, beat down, drugged down. But can I tell you the good news? Payday is coming. Sooner 
or later. Payday is coming. Can I get a little jazzy this morning? Uh, I, I, Betty Wright, Betty, Betty, I, 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 I listen to the blues. I listen to the blues. Betty, Betty Wright had it right. She, she, she said, God is going to bless me for loving you, for, for all the time that you treated me wrong. And I, don't y'all act like y'all don't know that. Don't y'all, I, I done sit some of y'all back. On, let me move on a little bit further. But she had it right. God is going to bless you for going through your trials and your tribulations. Trials sometimes humble us. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 2 says, Be completely humble and gentle and be patient, hearing one another in love. James chapter 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you. But the key, of course, is the phrase, in due time. You see, we want to be lifted on our own time. We, we, we want our trials to be over in our own time. But it's not, God does not work on your time, baby. God works on his own time. God is not no errand boy. You can't tell God when to move and when not to move. Don't nobody tell God what to do but God. Watch this. Not only does the text teach us, sometimes you got to look forward. Look back before you can look forward. Not only does it teach us, sometimes you got to go low before you can go up. But then sometimes, watch this, you got to lay something down before you can pick something up. It's in the text. Right here in verse number seven, it says, cast all your care upon him. There are benefits to having a relationship with God. Uh, whenever you, you, you do understand that whenever you got this spiritual life insurance, the life insurance comes with benefits. Uh, understand something, that, that there's benefits to having Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of your life. Uh, you, you, you have the privilege of letting him take care of your burdens. You see, you, you, you trying to carry these burdens on your own. But the word cast means to throw upon. That, there's some things that you got to throw down. There's some people who are in your life that you got to get away from. There, there's some things that you just got to throw down in order for God to put you in the position that he wants you in. Because understand something. Some of the people that you got in your very circle going to start acting funny when God starts blessing you. Is there anybody here that ever been like, I done been like that before. When, when God starts to bless you, when God blesses you with your new job, when God starts to, to bless you with your new car, some of the very, some of them family time, some of the very ones who you thought would be on your side are the very ones that will turn, turn their back on you. Then the very ones that will talk about you. Understand something. You got to learn how to throw something away the word care means anxiety or worrying that very thing that you're worried about throw it over to Jesus the, the, them trials and tribulations that you're worrying about throw it over to Jesus the relationship that you're in it seems like it ain't getting no better. Put it in God's hand. Put that man or that woman in God's hands. Quit trying to fix things on your own. Because the more you try to fix it, the more you messing it up. Whatever it is, whether it's bills, whether it's health, whether it's children or finances, put it over in God's hands. I don't know who it is that I'm talking to today. But can I tell you one thing about God? One reason why you can shout this morning is because 
whatever the burden is that's got you way down. God, yeah, does not care about your burdens, but he cares about you because he sent his only son out on Calvary cross, and he died for you and my sins. And I'm so glad today that I can testify and say that on one third the night, I filled out my application for my insurance. Yeah, on the questionnaire, yeah, can, can I tell you what was on the questionnaire when I filled out my insurance package? Yeah, and when I filled out on the insurance package, it said, have you ever done wrong in your life? And I, and I clicked the check mark, yes. And then, Brother Eric, I, I kept on filling out the application for my spiritual life insurance. And it said, uh, have you been some places that you know you shouldn't have been? And I, I checked mark, yes. But then uh, I, I kept right on reading, uh, and then I got down to a line, Sister Annie, and it said that when you sign your name, you're giving your life to God. And then the next line said, everything uh, that you check mark yes to, the Lord Jesus paid for it all. All of the wrong I've done in my life. All of the times that when I should have done wrong, when I should have done right, and I and I did wrong, God paid for it all. Deacon Miley, they asked the question, how much did he pay? Well, brother Lat, he paid yes for it all. And I just want to encourage someone here today that's going through your trials. And going through tribulations. And I want you to know that sooner or later, I don't know when, but I can testify it's all going to work out in your favor. Somebody here, testimony today is, I don't look like, yeah, I, I don't look like. What I've been through, because I've been through hell, and I've been through high water, but take a good look at me, I don't look like what I've been through. Sometimes, when I'm all by myself, and I get to thinking about how good God has been to me. And I just got to lift up holy hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Anybody here got to thank you, praise, because he just been that good to me. He woke me up this morning, so I got to tell him, thank you. He put clothes on my back, so I just got to tell him, thank you. When I walked into the kitchen this morning, Think about it, I had food in the refrigerator, and I just got to tell him, thank you. Not only that, but when I walked around in my home, all of my family was doing fine. So I got to tell him, thank you again. And then I just can't, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank him enough because you've been that good. You've been good. Has it been good to you? Has it made a way out of no way? Somebody here feel just like me if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Tell me where would I be? I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But oh, he made death 
get back and behave. If y'all don't mind, will you help me preach this thing? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. No matter what you're going through, no matter how you feel, sometimes I get so weak, y'all. Sometimes I feel like giving up. But I'm so glad to know that we serve a God who didn't give up on us when we were in this world full of sin. He saw the best in me when everyone saw the worst in me. They said, I'll never amount to anything but take a good look at me. I am a living testimony. If you keep your hands in God's hands, he'll work things out. Won't he work them out for you? If you know he will, shout yeah! Yes, yes, yes. One of these old days, I don't know when and I don't know where, but one of these days, like the old preacher, I'm going to step out and step in, pull off and put on. All of my crying days are going to be over. Sunday is every day over there. I got loved ones over there. Anybody got loved ones that you want to see? Anybody got a mother over there? Anybody got a father over there? Anybody got children over there? But one of these days, when it's all over, we got to step out and step in. Whoa, one of these days, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to fly away, fly away. No more burdens, no more trials, no more tribulations. It'll all be over sooner or later. It's got to work out. If you know it will, shout yeah! Ah, Yeah. 